Mahaba, um, good afternoon from uh, Manchester. Um, my name is Nick. I work uh, in the international office at the University of Salford. Um, and my colleague, Dr. Neil Robinson, is here with me, um, who hopefully you can see uh, in one of the uh, screens at the bottom there. And uh, we're going to be talking for the next sort of half hour, 40 minutes, um, about the University of Salford. Um, I'll tr we'll try and cover um, a general overview um, of what the university is like, where we are, what programs we do, what facilities we have, um, fees, scholarships, all that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll have some time at the end for, um, for you to ask questions. Um, Neil and I um, often travel um, to Turkey. Um, Neil's been going even longer than I have, um, so we're, we're very familiar with your country um, and uh, we both look forward to, to getting back as soon as possible. We both enjoy it very much. Um, obviously things are a little difficult at the moment. Um, in the UK, um, you know, the, the university, we're all working from home at the moment. Um, so I'm getting very used to talking to people um, through my laptop like this. And um, hopefully, you know, you'll, you'll find the presentation interesting. And uh, you, like I say, you know, if you've got any questions at the end, we'll be very happy to, uh, to address those. Before I go any further, I'm just going to share a short video about the university, just to kind of set the scene, give you a bit of an idea of, of what we're like. So I will, that's on the screen now. And uh, let me just see if I can make that work. Um, I think there's a little sound problem. All right. Can it's you turn on the voice Nick, can you try to turn on the voice a little bit? Okay, hopefully you were, I think we had one or two sound problems there, but uh, hopefully you were able to, to get the gist of that. Um, and the, the link to the uh, video is um, on the presentation that I'm about to deliver, so you'll be able to, to see it again if you want to. Um, what I'll do now is just switch over to um, the presentation that I'm, uh, I'm going to deliver. Uh, let me see if I can do that. Just one moment.
Hi, Neil. I think there was a connection problem on my side and probably on Nick's side as well, right? Yeah, um, well, I think we've frozen. Can you see your screen? Does it work for you? No, it doesn't. Um, everything's frozen. Can you hear me? I hear you. Uh, so what you can do is yeah. refresh your page or uh, click on Control, Alt and Delete buttons all together. Uh, teknik bir sorun yaşanmakta şu anda. Birazdan döneceğiz. Okay, Nick. Uh, Is that working okay now? Yeah, it works. I'll come back. Great. I'm sorry about that. Right. Let me. Uh, so it happens. Don't worry. Uh, so can you can you see the presentation on the screen now? Yeah, presentation is perfect and we see you as well. And uh, Neil, please click on the green button to go on stage. Otherwise, we won't hear you. You can start, by the way. Nick. Okay, great. I'll uh, start with the presentation. So, um, sorry about the technical hitches there. Um, obviously, we're all still getting used to the new way of working. Hopefully, it should run through absolutely fine from from now. Um, so, on the screen at the moment, um, you've got uh, the address of the presentation. Uh, the video that we just showed. That was a video that we had made um, just before Christmas. Um, with a film crew came on campus and uh, they spent a few days with one of our Nigerian students um, who's studying in the School of Arts and Media um, and we, we hope it kind of gives you just a, a flavour of um, kind of what student life is like in the UK. To go into a bit more detail about the university and um, tell you a bit, a bit more about us, um, if you haven't come across Salford before, um, we have quite a long history. We began as an engineering college in 1850, um, basically um, teaching engineering and science. Um, and we became a university in 1967. So we celebrated our 50th anniversary about three years ago. Um, we are located just outside Manchester city centre. Um, if you know of Manchester, possibly through um, football. Um, obviously, we're very famous for having two of the uh, the most famous football teams in the world. Um, but Manchester is also one of the biggest cities in the UK, um, probably the second biggest now after London. Um, it has about two and a half million people um, in the population. And um, it's a, a big student city as well. Um, so there are three big universities in Manchester. We are one of them. And also there are several um, other universities and colleges that are a bit smaller um, teaching smaller numbers of students. Um, as I mentioned, um, we're located just outside Manchester city centre. I'll show you on a map in a moment exactly where we are. Um, but we're very accessible for uh, for and getting into Manchester city centre. And one of the things that kind of distinguishes Salford is that we've invested a huge amount over the past few years in updating our facilities, um, improving the campus, um, 
things like um, improving accommodation. So we built um, several new blocks of accommodation on the campus, about two and a half thousand student rooms in there. And they were opened about four years ago. So they're very modern. Um, we've also um, completely revamped our arts and media facilities. Um, so we built a whole new building for that, um, which houses um, things like drama, performance, music, fashion, um, all that kind of thing. And the next part of the campus, which is being improved, is our engineering and science um, facilities. So that's going to be going over the next couple of years. Um, we're well known for high teaching quality and expertise. Um, we're quite a large university, um, probably kind of um, mid-sized in UK terms. Um, so we have students on campus. We also teach students around the world through um, online and transnational education. And in all, at the moment, we have about uh, just under 24,000 students and around 5,000 staff. Within that, um, we have about 5,000 international students, um, again, not just being taught at our campuses in Manchester, but also um, at other campuses in places like Sri Lanka, Bahrain, um, and around the world. So we are very, very international and outward looking. Um, you know, we're, we're, we're very keen to attract students to come and study with us in the UK. Um, but also very keen to get involved with partnerships worldwide, um, with teaching students overseas and so on. We teach a really wide range of subjects. Um, so we, um, we also get students collaborating across that, which is why we say that we're, we're interdisciplinary. Um, we're very industry focused, um, which is something that um, particularly at the moment, our current vice chancellor is extremely keen on. And for you as students, that would mean that you have the opportunity to meet employers and to network with them, to do placements and internships as part of your course and get that real world experience as well as the academic um, studies that you'd be doing. And we're very supportive. Um, I can, uh, you know, I think it's a very friendly place. Um, it's quite informal. Um, I've worked at Salford for about seven and a half years, but I also did my master's degree there part time over a few years. And my colleague Neil um, has been at Salford for a very long time. He did his PhD okay. there as well. Um, and I think we'd, we'd, we'd probably both agree that, you know, it's a friendly and supportive place, wouldn't you say, Neil? Yeah, yeah I would certainly agree with Nick there. Marabout, everybody. You're all keeping well and you can hear me. Yeah, what Nick said there is very true. Certainly the, the campus is very accessible. I've taught here for I think over 10 years now and it's probably one of the best higher education institutions that I've, I've actually taught at, certainly in terms of student support, in terms of the locality and access to the UK. We are very close to Manchester Airport and on the campus you'll find that uh, it's uh, it's not a huge campus so you know by definition classrooms are very accessible and so on and uh, certainly in the business school where i teach every individual every student will have a personal tutor who will look after them for their the duration of their studies for three years so that kind of gives you an overview to salford university and as, as nick says uh, nick and myself have been working together for a number of years now we do travel quite extensively throughout europe and the larger globe and you know salford and manchester is instantly recognizable a key part of the industrial revolution and then it's a wonderful place to study you know and contrary to what they say we do get good weather um, we've, we've, had, <laughs> we've had some excellent weather over the last couple of weeks whilst we've been in lockdown which seems quite ironic doesn't it nick it is yeah it, it's it's uh, it is very ironic it normally rains quite a lot here and I think over the past six or seven weeks while we've been stuck indoors it's been really nice I'm just looking out the window now and it looks like a lovely evening <laughs> but mm. never mind um, you can probably see from the map that's on the screen now um, we, we've got a marker there in the middle just showing where Salford is so Salford is part of Greater Manchester so we're very close to Manchester City Centre um, and the UK is not a big place you know it's, it's a fairly small country um, if you want to travel to London down in the southeast there, by train it takes less than two hours and that'll be getting even quicker. At the moment, the government is putting in the HS2 rail link, um, which will cut kind of half an hour to 45 minutes off that. And you've also got other major cities in the north very close nearby. 
if you like football, you've got Liverpool there, um, which is only about half an hour from Manchester. And you can also see a little bit further north, the city of Newcastle, where I'm from, who is uh, obviously the, the best football team in the UK there. Um, but you've also got Scotland and Wales very nearby. You know, you can be in Edinburgh, Glasgow within about three hours. So it's a, it's a good place to be if you want to do a bit of travel um, in the UK while, you, while you're studying and also very accessible for the rest of the world. I mean, when Neil and I travel to Turkey, we normally fly direct from Manchester to Istanbul with Turkish Airlines. It takes about four hours, direct flight, very, very easy. Um, so it's a, an easy place to get to. And once you're in Manchester, getting around is very simple as well. So you can see on the screen there, on the right hand side, you've got a, a little kind of almost a circle showing Manchester City Centre. And then you've got where our main campus is a little bit just to the northwest of that. If you were to walk into the city centre from our campus, it would take you about 15, 20 minutes. If you take a bus or a train, it would take you about five minutes. So it's very, very easy to get there. Um, just to give you a bit of a background on our schools, um, like most universities, we, we break down into a number of different schools or departments. Um, and the names of the schools give you an idea of the sort of subject that we teach. We actually cover most subjects. Um, about the only things we don't do are education and medicine. So if you want to become a doctor or a teacher, unfortunately, we don't do those. But we do pretty much everything else. Uh, we have arts and media, so that covers everything from art and design, um, fine art, fashion, illustration, through to things like music, performance, and also politics, history, film and television. We've got the business school, um, so that covers all of our programs in the area of kind of finance, management, business, and so on. We've got the School of Health and Society, which covers everything from nursing and physiotherapy through to healthcare management and public health. And then we've got one of the largest schools, um, science, engineering and environment, um, which covers everything from life sciences through engineering, physics, chemistry, mathematics and so on. And then we have the Salford Languages Department, and they cover things like pre-sessional English and also um, foreign languages. And we do programmes at all levels. Um, so you can start with us at Foundation Programme. So that will be like a pre-university programme. And we teach uh, undergraduate and postgraduate. And then we do postgraduate research programmes as well. So you could go all the way from kind of Foundation Programme to a PhD. And we also provide pre-sessional English language. So if you're applying to come to us and your English isn't yet quite at the level where you'd be able to study in the UK, then, you know, you, we can um, get you up to that right level. And just to give you a little bit more information about the length of the programmes that we teach. Um, a, in the UK, a Bachelor Honours degree is normally done over three years. Although if you decide to add a one-year placement, so you can work for a year, that would make the program four years altogether. But that's optional on a lot of our programs. You don't have to do it. A lot of student, students do choose to do the placements, um, basically because it's not only an opportunity to earn some money because you get paid and to get some really good work experience, but also um, you know, to, to kind of um, get your foot in the door with an employer and meet local people. And that's something that, you know, that a lot of the programs on the business school do, isn't it, Neil? Yeah, I think what Nick says is valid. We get a lot of students that decide to join us. They do a bachelor's degree for three years. Some of them decide to do a paid, certainly in the business school, a 12-month placement, which gets them good skills. They're able to develop language competences, and it looks very good on the CV. Quite a number of our students are actually returning after one or two years having engaged in uh, employment, and they're deciding to come back and study with us on a master's degree, either part-time or full-time. And I would encourage anybody to think long-term about where they see themselves. You know, the, the world is a big place. And as we've seen in recent months, what with uh, COVID-19, you know, the, the key skills are managerial, they are language, they are IT, um, they are engineering. So any of those broad subject disciplines like Nick alluded to, will greatly benefit you. And, you know, I would certainly encourage any of my loved ones to consider doing the 12-month the placement. That normally starts after year two. So you do, certainly in the business school, you do year one and two, study, 
year three on a placement and then a year four back. Some students just decide to do study years one, two and three and graduate. So it's entirely up to you. But as I say, the placements are good. They're, they're good on the CV. Many students return to be able to save some money. And that obviously helps with the process as well. Yeah, and you know, we, we the research that we've done with our students does indicate as well that students who do the placements consistently get higher marks at the final stage. Um, you know, that that experience is really invaluable for your academic side as well. Um, Can I just come in there, yeah, uh, Nick? No. That's okay. I, th I think that's a valid point that Nick makes, uh, makes, I should say. A large number of those students, certainly within you know my area, broadly business management, the students that tend to do a placement uh, historically have got a higher classification of a degree and that's because they've had an opportunity almost to academically mature whilst they're on the placement they've been able to crystallize what they've learned in the lecture hall and then relate it to the actual uh, placement environment and in a lot of cases we're finding at the university those students that have actually done a placement in many cases and nick will probably comment here after they've actually graduated get a, a job with their placement provider because they've had 12 months to actually showcase themselves whilst they've been on the student placement yeah it, it is i mean um, and we we do the placements at not just undergraduate but also master's level as well so if you're doing for example um a master's in management or accounting and finance something like that um, you can choose in the final stage to do either a three or a six month placement and not many universities offer placements on the master's programs as well but as Neil said you know it, it it's a great opportunity to um, get your foot in the door to network with employers and to demonstrate your skills and particularly now that the UK government has brought in a new scheme which allows students to stay for two years and work after they finish studying um, you know that that's a brilliant opportunity when you do your placement to try and you know get get a chance of a, a full-time job when you finish um, and you can see on the links on the bottom of the screen there and um, you know you can take a look at the kind of breadth of the programs that we do we, we'll talk about those in a little bit more detail in a moment just just finally on this page as well as I mentioned, we do go up to postgraduate research level and um, commonly referred to as a PhD. And that's normally done over three or four years full time. Um, and we, we have very active research departments um, in all of our different schools. I'll, I'll talk more a bit about that in the moment. Just to give you a quick bit of background on the School of Arts and Media. Um, I mentioned before some of the, the different subject areas that we do. The, these are not program titles these, these are just subject areas so within each of those there are um, a, a wide range of different programs and you can see full lists of them by going to the website i if i had a lot of time i could go through each course in detail but that would take days because we do do hundreds of different programs um, so this just gives you an idea of some of the specialist areas. Arts and Media is a very big school. Um, as I mentioned, they do everything from traditional art um, through graphic design, animation, to film and broadcast media, TV and radio. They're, they're big areas. A lot of journalism. Um, and we do you know, traditional things like English language and literature, creative writing, all the way through to politics and contemporary history. That, that was my particular area. I did a master's degree in that department um, part-time as well. So I have a lot of fond memories of that. Um, and as I mentioned, I think, you know, the, the facilities for arts and media really are fantastic. I'll put up some photographs in a little while so you can get an idea of the, the quality of the facilities. But I'll just hand over to Neil for a moment now to talk, talk about his school. Um, Neil, Neil teaches and does research in the business school. So do you want to take it away for a minute or two there, Neil? Yeah, thanks for that, Nick, and uh, a very uh, robust review of, of University of Salford there. Certainly for the next uh, five minutes, I'll just detail a, a brief overview to Salford Business School. So I teach at uh, the University of Salford in the Business School. Uh, the University of Salford, uh, certainly in the Business School, has a number of key programmes. We have undergraduates, which tend to be bachelor-based, we have postgraduate, we have master's programs relating to banking, finance, um, management related service sector, marketing and so on. And some of you may also be interested in our 
postgraduate PhD related studies as well. And as Nick alluded to before, you can do a, a full time PhD in, in approximately three or four years. So it's worth looking at. I think one of the hallmarks of any business school in, in the UK is the fact that it provides a raft of programs from undergraduate postgraduate PhD and also industry based so it's not uncommon for us to be uh, you know contacted by key employers in the public private or voluntary sector and we're often asked to put on programs bespoke to that organization so I teach on the undergraduate marketing program I'm the program leader for, for BSC marketing so if you're interested in a broad area associated with promotions management service sector delivery that would certainly be the program for you. But I would encourage any student to think about the broad business studies area. You know, many of our employers come to us and they say one of the, the benefits of studying a business degree is that it, it's a broad approach that, you know, kind of equips students with all the requirements that they need in terms of, of the bigger you know, employment opportunity. And another key benefit of our undergraduate program is, for, ex for example, if you did the first year on international business and you successfully completed it and whilst doing the international business program you'd you got a flavor of the marketing program so all international business students do principles of marketing which i teach on you know it is okay for students to change over into their second year into a like related program so it's not unusual for students to go from business studies in the first year to marketing from students in the first year on marketing to change and do you know second year international business so that's certainly another benefit that certainly in the first year if you've enjoyed the program but you suddenly have um, you know the awakening that you want to study something more specific there is a great opportunity there also a lot of our programs at undergraduate level have service sector provision one of the key employers globally now is the service sector and certainly on the marketing and management programs we're recognizing the importance of digital marketing so if you decide to study with us on the marketing program at undergrad you'll do introduction to um, marketing uh, digital marketing with myself you'll also do principles of marketing and also in the final year there, there are a number of opportunities so I, I think to conclude that you know one of the benefits of studying in Salford is very close to Manchester it's very accessible the campus is manageable it's not like um, you know the, the traditional large American universities where you literally need to get on your bike or a car to go from A to B all of the lectures are, are very much in-house there's a lot of support staff are available you'll have a personal tutor and i do feel that the opportunity to do the placement is something that certainly students should consider on the undergraduate and postgraduate program so i'll come back at the end and obviously engage with nick and i can answer some questions associated with the business school the business school has a good reputation locally uh, regionally and obviously internationally and it's interesting uh, Nick will probably corroborate this you know we're often, often overseas in somewhere like Istanbul or, or Izmir and people will come and say you know I studied at University of Salford back in 1980 so it's nice to see people coming back and uh, remembering the you know positive memories from the University of Salford so I'll, I'll hand back to Nick on that Thanks, Neil. That's great. Yeah, that, that's very true, actually. It's one of the nice things, and we get it in several countries um, that we travel to. You know, you'll get parents coming along with their children, um, and the kids are interested in coming to Salford because the parents met there 20 or 30 years ago. Um, so it's always nice to talk to some alumni. Um, just to qu quickly give you a bit of background on a couple of the other departments at the university. Um, I mentioned the School of Health and Society. So you can see there um, a kind of range of subjects that we do. Obviously, at the moment, we're getting a lot of interest in students and um, wanting to do things like public health and um, healthcare management. Um, and the public health is particularly interesting because it does include the study of things like epidemiology, um, you know, which is obviously very relevant at the moment uh, with the situation that we're all in. But we do cover a wide range. So the school has everything from nursing and midwifery through to social sciences, sports and exercise and physiotherapy. 
Um, and whether you're interested in nursing or counselling or managing in healthcare, you know, that kind of thing, working as a therapist, there's something there for, for, for everybody. Um, we, I, we do have, I think, the largest school of nursing in the UK. Um, you know, we work with a lot of local hospitals as well. So again, you have that on all of these programmes, you have the opportunity to um, to meet professionals, to do work experience, you know, to, to get that real world um, knowledge. And that, that applies again very much to um, the final big school, um, which I've just put up on the screen there. So again, you can, you can see the kind of breadth of the, the subjects that we cover. And um, so if you're interested in science, maths, engineering, um, you know, architecture and design, um, life sciences, anything like that, um, Again, we cover all of these, and the, the, these subjects, um, just to kind of remind you, are, are all available, uh, most of them, all the way from foundation through to postgraduate research. So, you know, you can do a degree, you can do a master's, you can go on and do research in all of these areas. And then finally, um, just to give you a little bit of information about language at the university, um, we do a range of pre-sessional English language programs. So you can come and do a short English language course before you start your degree or your master's. In response to the COVID-19 situation, we're now bringing in online English language testing, which will be available from the start of next month. Um, and we'll be sending out more information about that. And also while you're studying, you know, if you're doing a degree or a master's, perhaps in business, um, and you want to um, get a bit of language skills on the side. And um, we also do supplementary programs that you can study at, in addition to your degree or your master's in the subjects that are on the screen there. And obviously, you know, as, as Neil mentioned, you know, um, we live in a global global business environment. Um, it affects a lot of people in a lot of different um, careers now, you know, and, and having language skills is a, is a fantastic um, bonus when you're when you're looking for jobs. I mean, if, you, if you're a Turkish student looking to come to the UK, then you've got a massive advantage anyway, because you're already speaking at least two languages very well. Um, but, you know, if you want to add to that, the opportunities are there. Just going to put up a few photos now of, of our campuses. So we have we have two main campuses um, at the university. Peel Park is the older one, um, which is where our oldest building on campus dates from back in 1896. And what you can see on the screen at the moment are some students in our school of, uh, doing aeronautical engineering with us in the School of um, Science, Engineering and Environment. And it gives you an idea of the the kind of uh, the mix of students that we have. So you can see obviously there, um, I think we've got a couple of Turkish students on there, but we've also got students from Africa, from Asia and the Middle East. And the university, as I mentioned before, is, is very international. Um, we've got some really fantastic facilities on the campus. What you can see on the screen now is what's called an anechoic chamber. And it's uh, um, there are only two or three of these in the UK. We're very lucky that we have one on campus. Um, and our students studying audio acoustics and sound um, will use this for experiments. It's a, a chamber which is not only cuts out all sound, but actually um, reduces sound to, I think, about minus 12 decibels. So it's not just silent. It's kind of beyond that. It's quite a strange place to be in. You can, you can hear your heartbeat um, when you're in there and the kind of blood flowing um, in your body. It, it's quite eerie, but a really, really good facility for our students to use. Uh, also on the screen now, we've got our um, one of our biology labs, um, which is very big. It has facilities for teaching about 120 students at once. Um, and that was opened only a couple of years ago. So the, the facilities in there really are top notch. And we have the Energy House, which is a um, experimental facility um, it's actually a real house that was taken apart um, and rebuilt within a, a pressurized chamber um, and we use it for experiments on things like um, home insulation um, environmental science um, you know so we can simulate weather conditions in there you can take them the temperature down from about 10 below zero to about 30 degrees Plus, we can make it rain and snow in there. And our students um, you know, and industry use that as, a, as an experimental facility. Um, one of the newer facilities on the campus, the, again, the main one, is the New Delphi building. That's our 
um, brand new arts and media facility, purpose built, um, and that houses um, departments like fashion, um, drama, music, and um, a lot of our perfor other performing arts programs. And within it, we've got a 300 seat theater um, built to industry standards. Um, you've got recording and performance studios, again, fully equipped with um, industry standard equipment. Um, you see one of our students there in the fashion department using sewing machine and the dance studios. So these are these are really nice, you know, good facilities to be in. So that's the Peel Park campus, uh, which is the larger one. We also have a campus at a place called Media City UK, which is um, now the biggest media hub in Europe. Uh, the BBC are there. A lot of the buildings you can see on the screen now are, are BBC studios or offices. Um, and we are the only university to have a campus there. Um, you've also got ITV yeah. there, who are the other big media company in the UK. Mm -hmm. But in all, there's about 80 different media companies based there at the moment. And it's only about 15 minutes by metro from Manchester City Centre. There's also a free bus service that runs between our two campuses. So our students can travel between them very easily. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes and our facilities down at media city which are in the building just on the on the right hand side there um, we've got the the first three stories of the large building there and this is where we do things like journalism we do film and tv and radio and again you know we can offer our students placements with people like the bbc which is not a lot of universities can do and um, you know that, that it really does give us a kind of an edge you know if you're looking to study anything in the area of film or tv or journalism media anything to do with that um it's one of the best places in the world to study it you know i'm, I'm not exaggerating there it really is fantastic um, can i interrupt you there nick and say i completely agree with you it really <laughs> is Hello, i'm glad you could join us <laughs> And I say that as someone who has been at Salford for 10 years since the City UK campus opened. And uh, I was read the programs that we run down there, as Nick has explained in television and radio and film and post-production and all those really exciting creative media programs that we offer there. And before that, I was actually working as a media producer myself for the BBC and for ITV making documentaries. So I was really excited to be able to help um, encourage the new programs and students into Media City. And it's even better than before. It's a wonderful place to study and a wonderful place to work. So I can't recommend it highly enough, both from a Salford perspective and from the perspective of someone who used to work in that industry itself. Thanks, Annabelle. I'm, I've, I've, it's really good to have you on. This is um, Dr. Annabelle Waller. Um, she's uh, one of my my closest colleagues at the university. Like like Neil, um, she and I work very closely together. I'm also, in addition to working in the national office, I, I'm a, the liaison for the School of Arts and Media, um, as well as being an alumnus. Um, so Annabelle and I do do a lot of work internationally, and, and she travels the globe probably more than I do at the moment. Um, well, not not quite at the moment, but we we do a lot of travel between us. Um, but as, as she mentioned, um, you know, she has a previous career with the BBC, um, and she's now our international director for the School of Arts and Media. Um, and it's a school that's really, um, you know, we've 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 attracted a lot of international students there recently, haven't we, Alan Bell? Absolutely, it's um, just going it from strength to strength, really, and they are students from all over. The globe that's what's wonderful about it we have uh, students from europe and from turkey and from the middle east and from africa and from china and from southeast asia i think it's because in the past maybe a lot of students might have thought that they definitely wanted to do science or engineering or technology and now maybe some students are thinking they really like the creative industries and they can see there's jobs there and that's, I guess, what I find exciting about the programmes that we offer, particularly being based at Media City UK, where you're right next door to the BBC. You literally walk out and 100 um, steps away, you're at the entrance to the BBC. And in the floors directly above our classrooms is ITV. So we couldn't be closer. And that really gives students great opportunities in terms of getting work experience 
and getting a flavour for how the industry works. Mm. And there are employment opportunities in that area. So it's um, it's a, a really interesting and creative degree to study, either undergraduate or postgraduate. But there are also a lot of jobs out there at the moment because it's a sector where people really need new people who are skilled in technology and also creativity. It is, yeah, and I think particularly for Turkish students, you know, the, judging by the interest I've had when I've been um, traveling in Turkey, meeting students, there's there's a lot of interest. I mean, we're, I've noticed, um, you know, on um, on British TV now and platforms like Netflix, um, we're starting to get more and more um, Turkish television crossing over. Um, you know into into the, those sort of global distribution platforms and and certainly when i when i fly with turkish airlines um you know i always make a point of trying to watch some turkish um, tv there's some really good series that i've come across we had one that was picked up by the bbc um quite recently um called um ottoman and um, was a historical tv drama um which was really well received um and i think it is you know it, it the, the Turkish film and um, TV and film industry is really burgeoning. So if you're interested in that area of things, you know, it's a really good time to, to get those skills. And as Annabelle says, you know, there's, there's not really, you know, many places in the world that are, can do what we can do. Um, you know, it really is. I can't overstate how, how exciting and, you know, the, the facilities are all industry standard, you know, you're working to a professional level Um you know, that, that is exactly the same as an industry. So we really do produce industry ready students. You know, you don't need further training. We do find that, you know, the BBC actually yeah. come and use our facilities. Um, they used to them for coverage of the UK general election um, at the end of last year um, and for a lot of other things. And one of the, um, you know, we, we, we have an exchange agreement with them whereby they can use our studios, but they have to allow our students to work on the programmes. And, and it works really well, doesn't it, Annabelle? Absolutely. And um, uh, it just means that there's those opportunities for industry to come into your classes, into your lessons, and to, you know, give master classes to really make sure that you're learning absolutely contemporary, cutting-edge skills. And, you know, all our degrees and our programmes are shaped by industry. Mm. So it's we're... Just- Sure that what you're learning is what the industry wants you to know at the end of it. Yeah, I mean, I put, I put up a slide there just just with the names of a few of the companies that we work with. If, if I if I if I listed them all, it would take all day. Um, but obviously, there's you know there's some very recognisable names there. Um, you know, and it it's you know as Neil alluded to before, um, it runs throughout all of our schools. Um, you know. This connection with industry, um, you know, our academic staff have backgrounds in industry. We have people coming in from industry to do master classes. Um, so not just when you're doing your placements, um, all the way through your programs, you have we have this engagement with industry, and it, it, I think it is what what really makes Salford special. Um, I'm just looking at the clock. I'll, I'll have to move on slightly quickly. Um, but just to kind of um, cover research quickly, um, you know, that, that is yeah. an area that we, we're very strong on. And if you're interested in postgraduate research with us, um, then, you know, I, I put the link up earlier. Do have a look on there. But there's just some, a bit of information on the screen at the moment about um, our um, kind of government rating um, in the research excellence framework which is an exercise that the government in the UK does every, um, I think it's about five or six years at the moment, um, to assess the research within universities. And we were very pleased that, you know, 90% of the research at Salford was of an internationally recognised standard. So you do have a, a, you know, a kind of a guarantee there of the the quality Mm -hmm. of the research that's going on here. Something that students often ask about um, and students' parents ask about even more, and I can understand that because I've got a daughter at university, um, is money. Um, So I've put up some links on the screen at the moment about the fees that we charge, our scholarships and student life. Um, Fees vary depending which course you do. So um, the cheapest programmes that we have are probably around £10,000 in the UK. 
the most expensive would go up to about 19,000. Most of them are probably somewhere in the middle there, but they do vary often depending on whether you're doing a classroom based program or something which involves using a lot of equipment. Um, but if you could, you know, just take the links there and, um, you know, you'll be able to um, click on those and have a good look through with your parents or your guardians. We do have a wide range of scholarships as well. And we have scholarships just for students um, from Turkey and the Middle East. And um, we also have um, scholarships um, with partners like Chevening, and we have scholarships for um, particular subjects. And again, if you have a look through there, you know that there are quite generous ones. You can get an idea of what's on offer. The links that are also up on there as well, you've got things about student life on campus, um, accommodation and how to, to book it, and employability. That's, that's not just kind of when you finish studying, but also part-time work while you're studying. Because students at the moment who come to the UK on a student visa are allowed to work part-time 20 hours a week. And that is something that we encourage. Um, you know, again, not just a chance to get some experience and earn a bit of extra money, but also a chance to meet local people. Because sometimes if you're studying, you know, you might only be making friends with your other students. Um, and getting a job in a restaurant or an office or a call centre or something like that is a chance just to meet kind of everyday people around Manchester and Salford and make friends outside of your, your usual circle. Um, and you know, you generally will find people, people around Manchester are very friendly and welcoming. It, it's a cosmopolitan international city. Um, there are over 200 languages spoken in Manchester. You know, when you walk around, you will see many people who are obviously from different parts of the world. Um, so it's it's a very comfortable and welcoming place to come to. And there are some fantastic Turkish restaurants in Manchester. Um, that's, uh, I think, one of, my, one of my favorite things about coming to your country is, is the food. Um, but fortunately, we do have some great restaurants and takeaways here as well. So, uh, you know, if you, if you want to get uh, good Turkish food, it's very easy to find. Just to run you quite quickly through how to apply, um, we take undergraduate applications through the UCAS system. Um, it's very straightforward. All UK universities use it. Um, and if you just click on the link that's on the screen, that will explain everything about how to, to make an application. For postgraduate studies, you can apply directly to us. Um, so we have an online application system. Uh, the link on the screen at the moment is for postgraduate taught applications. So that would be for a master's program. And that doesn't matter whether you're doing business or fashion or engineering or music or, or whatever. Um, it all goes through the same system. We do have some information on there about the sort of things that we'll ask for. Some of our programs will require something like an interview, maybe, or an audition or the submission of a portfolio. But we will explain that in the application process for you. It's all on the online system. But just to give you a bit of an idea, you've got on the screen at the moment some examples of the things that we'll ask for. And then postgraduate research, again, very similar. Um, you know, the sort of things that we'll be asking for, copies of your certificates, um, a personal statement explaining why you're interested in it. But for a PhD, we would also ask for a research proposal. That doesn't have to be too long maybe about a thousand words, just outlining what you want to do your specific research in. Just to quickly run you through, um, you know, this is something we get asked about a lot by students. If they are asked to submit a personal statement or an interview, what does that involve? And, you know, as you can see from the screen, it's really just our chance to find a bit more background about you. Um, because we're interested in, you know, why you're interested in the subject, why you think you might make a good student, what you've done in your life, you know, if you if you achieved things in academic, the academic side or at sports or your your kind of part pastimes, part time work, that kind of thing. And it, it's a bit like, you know, if you're applying for a job, we, we want to know, um, you know, what can you bring to the program and, you know, what, what's going to make you a really good student um, who can contribute to the university as well. Um, and, you know, make, make sure that you talk about you. It's your chance to really sell yourself as, a, as an applicant to the university. So do bring out all of the things, you know, about, about yourself that you think make, would make you a good student. 
Um, we've got a guide if, you, if you're asked to submit a portfolio. Um, so, you know, you might be studying something like fine art or fashion or architecture. And we'll ask to see some examples of your work. Um, you can download this really good guide on our website um, for how to put together a fantastic portfolio. But again, there's some guidance on the screen at the moment about the sort of things that we'd want to see. Um, so examples of your work, you know, over time to see how you've developed, um, but also work in different media, different styles. And with some notes, just to explain what you were trying to achieve, what you were thinking about, what you know, why you were doing this particular thing at a per particular time. Again, we want to get an idea of you know the what you're like as a as a practitioner or an artist or a performer, um, and that goes through to you know if you're doing an audition as well. Again. You know, obviously make sure it's of as, as good quality as possible. You know, get somebody who knows what they're doing to film you or record you. Um, follow the guidance that you're given. So that, that's the same whether it's an interview or a portfolio or an audition. Um, and Can I just add to that, Nick, that, um, say that Nick's absolutely right. You know, do the best job you can. But in the end, we're not judging you on the tools of your portfolio. What we really want to see is how passionate are you? And can you explain what you were trying to achieve even if you didn't completely achieve it? If you wanted to get a certain effect and you didn't quite manage it, it's okay if you can explain what you were aiming for and why and what you might do differently next time. We kind of want to see how you think and how you try to approach your subject, be it art or performance or music or architecture or whatever, it's kind of more important to see how you think and how you would try to solve problems rather than getting to know that you've got the best kit or technical expertise. I hope that helps. Yeah, I, th I think that that's a great point. And, it, you know, it applies to all of our programs, you know, as part of the learning process. Um, in any discipline is, is is making mistakes and learning from them and reflecting on that. Um, and, you know, that you will do that and there will be times, you know, as a, as a student, hopefully you, you will feel really challenged and, you know, that, that it is it should be difficult. And, um, you know, it, we will give you all the help that you need to overcome those difficulties, though. You know, that, that that's part of the, the educational process. Um, but I, th I think particularly, you know, what Annabelle was saying there is, is um, and this applies to all of our programmes, what we want more than anything are students who are enthusiastic and passionate. You know, we we can teach you um, how to do an accounting spreadsheet or a, a business presentation or how to play a piece of music or how to make a garment or, or you know, whatever it is. Um, we can teach you those things. That's what you come to university for. But it's very hard to teach enthusiasm. So what we really look for are, are bright enthusiastic students who are going to work hard, who are going to come to the classes all the time, who are going to put in that extra effort um, and, you know, really, really apply themselves. Um, and I think one of the great things about Salford is, you know, we attract people like that and they really thrive at Salford. Um, you know, I, I certainly found that in my studies. Um, you, I imagine, Neil and Annabelle, you, you, you found that with your students as well. Um, guys, I'm sorry to interrupt, but I want to remind you that uh, there are a few questions and we are about to end our webinar. No problem. Um, we'll, we'll move to the questions now. Um, I'm just putting up on the screen. Um, we do have representatives in Turkey. Um, and if you'd like a copy of this presentation, I'd be very delighted to send it to you directly. And if you can't ask a question, I'm going to put my contact details up at the end email me directly and I'll be really happy to talk to you um, afterwards. So you've got the contact details on the screen there now if you want to make a note of those. Um, you've got the contact details for all of us um, in the office here. Um, and this will be on YouTube um, as well afterwards as well. And then you've got some general contact details for us on the screen as well. So I'm just going to move back to um, my camera um, so that uh, hopefully you can you can see us all on the screen now. Um, and we, I believe we've got some questions. So I'm going to have a look at those now. Let's have a look. So we, we've got a question from a student um, asking about transferring in 
um, from a Turkish university? The broad answer is yes, you can. Um, and we do have students who have studied in many different countries um, for maybe one, two or three years um, who will transfer in. It normally depends on what you've studied um, and how close that is to something that, that, that we teach. Um, so, for example, you know, you might have done two years of management um, in a school, um, in a university in Turkey, and you want to come on to the final year of our program. What we'd ask you to do would be to submit um, of your transcript showing what you've studied to us, and you can send those directly to me, um, and I'll be happy to pass them on to our admissions team. And then one of the tutors from the program will have a look at that, hopefully match it up with our program, and we should be able to give you credit for that. It's not always possible. Um, and some programs, it's easier than others. Um, I would say if you're studying something like mathematics, which is the same in any language, um, it's going to be easier. If you're doing something like English literature, which might you might have covered very different um, areas of literature, it may be more difficult. But we're always very keen to look at it. So I, I would always encourage you to approach us, and we're very happy to look at that. I mean, I, I'm sure you'd probably agree with that, Annabelle and Neil. Yeah, 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 yeah. Totally. I think what you said there, there is appropriate. It's it's worthwhile just detailing what you already have, and then so we can benchmark that against, you know, the the program you're interested in joining. Mm. But we we do get students every year who do that, um, and often if we if we can't accommodate you, we might be able to recommend somewhere else that you could go. I um, mean, you know, we we do have a lot of contacts um, in the sector, so if we can't offer you it ourselves, we will always try and help you to find somewhere else. Um, as well. Obviously, we'd love you to come to Salford first, though. Um, we've got a question from Furkan Zorman, just asking about scholarships. Yeah, we do. Um, so if you were, um, I mean, you mentioned the Master of Finance program. We do have scholarships across all of our um, schools and subjects. Um, we have something called the Salford International Excellence Scholarship. And um, if you have a look um, on our um, the links that I put up earlier, um, then um, you can see all of the scholarships that are available at the university. The International Excellence Scholarship is the only one you have to apply for separately. The others are we all look at automatically, so like regional scholarships, um, subject scholarships, and so on. Um, but take a look on the website. Just go to the international pages. It's all there. Um, and like I say, if you've got any questions, just contact me as well. Um, the GPA requirements um, will vary depending which program you do. Um, so, um, and you know, the the kind of language sometimes varies as well depending what subject you're doing. Best thing to do is to take a look at the website at the course pages, and you can see details on there. Of exactly what we ask for for each program and again if you want that translated um, into Turkish high school or Turkish university grades contact me directly and I'll be able to tell you exactly what you would need and um, you know we can have a chat on whatsapp or skype um, and uh, I'll be able to help you with that I think that answers all the questions and we're probably just running out of time now and um, so do, do you guys want to just say cheerio Yes, lovely to have been able to um, talk to you and um, really hope to be able to welcome you to Salford at some point in the future. Thank you, Annabelle. Yeah, yeah ditto what Annabelle and Nick have said. You're, you're more than welcome at Salford anytime. Come and say hello. We've got a great international community in Salford. And uh, Nick and myself look forward to getting back to Istanbul and Ankara and Izmir. And um, should you be on the uh, campus, please pop in and say hello, irrespective of the programme you're studying. So yeah. thank you. Back to you in the studio, Nick. <laughs> Thank you, Neil. Thank you, Annabelle. And we just need to get Annabelle out to Turkey now as well. <laughs> um just just to you all in the audience, um, thank you very much for tuning in. It's been really enjoyable. I, I, I really enjoy doing these. I enjoy talking to students face to face when I'm when I'm out traveling. But um it, this is the next best thing and I hope you found it informative. Do contact us to ask any questions if you have them and uh, look after yourselves and take care. Thank you. Thank you all. It was a great presentation. I hope uh, that ours contact you personally. Thanks for participating.
Thank you very much, Sal, Ken. And we, we're bang on one hour there. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you very much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.